All right, welcome to the uh, Bronx Graffiti Arts Documentary Project. My name is Butch Two, and I am joined by Jenny Scratch. Please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Scratch. Uh, I'm already from Stockholm, Sweden, and I started writing graffiti in 1989. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about your parents, family history? Yeah, so my mom is Swedish and my dad is Italian, Ooh. so yeah, and I was raised in Stockholm by my mom, so right. I don't speak Italian, but I do speak Swedish, so oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Bilingual. Yeah, and we learn English in school, so it's kind of like a second language in Sweden, so. Do you have any brothers, sisters, uh, aunts, uncles, stuff yes. like that? Yes, so I'm from a blended big family. So if we count everybody, I have four sisters and three brothers. Wow. Yeah. Eight of you. Yes. Okay. But you know, split when, when and you remarried fall. and more kids and then right. more kids and kids from before. So it's the one big blended So you got, nieces, you got nieces and nephews and all <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, I can't count. I can't, can't <laughs> even, yeah, it's too many. Where did you fall in in the family tree? So I have an older sister and then I was after her. And then my mom and my stepdad, he had a son. Okay. And then they had two daughters. And about the same time, my dad remarried and had three kids on that side. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, what did your mom do for a living? My mom was like a nurse assistant. So mm -hmm. I used to work nights right. uh, when I was growing up. And my stepdad, he was a computer programmer. Okay. And my dad, he had his own business. Did you do any schooling in um, Stockholm? Did you start school there? Or? So it's, so most people in Sweden go to public school. Right. So it's kind of like regular public school. Right. And then uh, we can't go to university, uh, which is usually free. That's so we, we don't pay tuition in Sweden. Like to to college? You, yeah. You go for free? Yeah, you don't pay tuition. They're right. private ones that you can go to too. That for specific to for. Uh, subjects, whatever. Right. But um, most of universities, we call them universities, we, you know, um, they're free. Like you might have paid for books and board and stuff, but you don't actually pay tuition to go to college. So right. It's a little different. So yeah. I did, um, I did, it was like one year, very intensive study. So the On first what subject? advertising. Okay. So this was after, you know, high school, a few years, I did various jobs. And then I was like, well, I want to do something else. And I always interested in advertising because when I was in high school, I was part of doing a documentary and the producer, director, he worked at an ad agency. So he let us come up and do rough editing on real estate tape. So I was like, advertising sounds kind of cool. I like doing the project, you know, create a project. So I saw this uh, ad for school uh, or program, I should say, it was one year. So first semester in Stockholm, second semester in New York. So I applied, I got accepted. And, and you came to New York. And then that's how I came to New York. Wow. I did an internship. They offered me a job. So that's how I kind of ended up here. It was like 1997. So long time ago. So, yeah. You've been here for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But before we leave Stockholm, um, <laughs> did you have any fond memories as a child that you you guys, uh, before you met spray paint and magic markers and just paint in general. So before that, remember, I grew up in Sweden, right? In the suburbs, the Stockholm. I used to do horseback riding. Oh, so right. I used to do horseback riding with my sister. So we used to do that once a week. You know, mm. go to riding school, and I mean, Sweden is very different from here. It's you know, it's, I grew up in the suburbs, and then my mom. She's from a small town that was three hours north from Stockholm. What's so, the town called? Uh, Bolnets. So we used to go there every summer and visit my grandma. And she used to care us for the summer, you know, because it's for summer break. Right. Uh, so we used to go there a lot. So I have very fun memories from there. And then, you know, it's like you take the little bicycle and you go to the lake. And right. You spend the whole day at the lake or at the pool or a lot of outdoors, very outdoorsy. Um, which makes me wonder, uh, were there any, what is the weather out uh, like in Sweden? Is it 
seasons? Is it yes. always cold, always hot? We get the four seasons. Okay. Like here, but it's um, drier. We don't have the humidity because you know it's like higher up uh -huh. on the you know, uh, and we do get warm, but not as hot as New York summer. Like That's with the hot and humidity, we right. don't have that. But right. we get hot, and then the winter it gets very cold. You know, and we also have the thing because we're higher up. We also have you know the midnight sun, right? This sun it's barely goes. It gets like dusk, right? But it never gets it's like dark. super dark, right? In the summer and the winter is the opposite. Is the darks very long, and then the, we have very little light. So you know what that makes me think of. I could be wrong, but is that the Swiss Alps out there where you at? No. No. So the the Swiss Alps is uh, for them. It's like mid middle. We're in the north. Okay. North Europe. So. All right, one more question about that. Um, what was your favorite meal? What did you like? What, what do they cook? How do, you know? Well, do you I'm like... half Italian. I have the Italian bread oh. and pasta genes. So oh. It doesn't matter. I grew up with my Swedish mom. We still like, you know, the pasta, the bread. I don't know. It's just in my genes. What's your favorite, though? Lasagna and mm. pizza. Pizza and lasagna. So well, pizza, those were my you, favorite growing up. You know, yeah. we got a pizza shop on every other corner here, so you fit yeah. right into that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, that sounds good. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm also designed to, uh, you want to tell us about how you say you came to New York um, on a, a intern scholarship? Yeah, school first. Right. Uh, and so it was combined, like it was for school. And then uh, we had a three month internship. So I did have an ad agency um, and then they offered me a job because they liked me. Right. That's good. So, um, you got to, you're in New York now. Did you find it like a, was it a culture shock? Did you like, oh, because I was even in just another state in the United States and there was a culture shock. I went to Texas and everybody says hello. I'm like, what is this? Well, for us, it's a little bit similar because in Sweden, like here you have that, um, it's like a more polite, like, how, how are you? It's a little more like for us, it's like, do, do they really mean it? Is it fake? Or like, that, do, do they too. like, you know, it's like, we're like, well, it's a little odd. We, we don't have that kind of like, the, like, you know, a little bit of that English politeness, you know, we are a little more informal in that way. Right. So yes, there's some like things like, you know, we're like, how do you say that? And also we studied British English in school. So we have to think about like, well, now is the American English. So mm -hmm. certain words, can mean totally different things. So right. we have to be careful. Exactly. Thinking about that. Exactly. Like, you know, like, like, oh, what did we say? Oh, no. Like, you know. That's that's the best thing to do in, yeah. in a new culture is kind of just listen. Yeah. First. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? You jump in and you can be yeah. saying the wrong thing. Yeah. I probably still do, but, you know. You know, but <laughs> then you, you got here and um, the art had to be, was it intriguing? What, when did you first notice the graph or? So I, because I was doing creative work. I was working as the art director, graphic designer and advertising. So my work was kind of creative and I actually didn't paint anything. I had a period of about 16 years. I didn't paint at all. What was it? Computer? Yeah. Graphic, oh, I don't yeah, know too much computer. about it. Yeah. yeah. So basically it's like uh, art direction or graphic design and advertising is you come up with like a concept and idea for a project or for an ad or for, you know, depending on whatever they, they want you to create. It could be a TV commercial. It could be a poster. It could what, be what do they anything. call that? Like pitches? Like, you know how you get a product and you'd be like, you got to make those slogans and stuff like that? Yeah, we didn't, I didn't do slogans because I do graphics. So, you know, creative arts, the art side more. So and the one to do the slogan stuff is called the copywriter. So, yeah. Usually what we do, you work together as a team, like an art director, group yeah, writer, yeah. and then you brainstorm and you come up with an idea and then yes, you have to present the idea to the client, uh, you know, see what they think, what they like, and sometimes then you make like one million edits, you know, and hopefully they approve it at the end and, you know, it get aired or produced, you know. So when you have a client, is it guaranteed uh, Acceptance, they, they hire you and you get paid like commission. Because if I get commission, you paying me to do something, uh, but I'm going to try right. to satisfy you with the product. Yeah, but like when you work in advertising, they you work for an agency. So right. they're, they're actually their clients and you work for the agency. So they pay you, um, you know, so it doesn't really matter. But 
now I have my own company. I have my own company since. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, that's nice. 2005. Oh. So I mean, it's up and down. Like you can either freelance, so then you get paid by the hour, right? right so right. it doesn't matter. Like they hire you, and whether they like it or not, they still have to pay for your time because you did the, right. did the job basically. That that's good to get so, involved in that yeah. whole thing. Um, yeah. Now, I want to backtrack for a minute and ask you about that infamous graffiti school. Could you tell right. me about that? So, back in 1989 in Stockholm, Sweden, um, around February, they opened for the public. Uh, Who, who's they? The infamous graffiti school you're talking about? Right. So, they, what they did was uh, there were a few different organizations that went together, um, and they somehow come up with the idea to do these school i don't remember if it was a writer someone came up with the idea to do it was it something like what a together. hall of fame is like they just had a, a big walls where they, no nothing like so that. what they had was um they started and then they hired one artist that he was kind of considered like a street artist he started in the 70s and he literally got with like a bucket and brush and paint on the walls of stockholm right. his name was the hawk like the swedish name for the hawk um, Herken, uh, the hawk in English, and then there was some. They hired some other artists mm -hmm. to help to teach, right? So they gave us a space. It was an abandoned school because they figured, you know, it might be some destruction. Uh, I guess. Right. But they gave us a, so, so it was like an old um, workshop, like school classroom that we were in, uh, and they gave us paint, you know. They had a, one of them that worked there, one of the kids, he was like 18 at a time, I call him a kid. His name was Brain. Yes, you were a kid. And <laughs> he, he's gonna watch this, I'm telling you. Because he's following me on Instagram now. Like 30 years later, he started following me on Instagram. So um, he was brazen. He used to like contacted, like, can we get sponsor? Can you sponsor us? He was one that got like the paint company to sponsor. And, you know, and the MTA, the Swedish MTA also was part of it originally because they thought like, let's give the kids a space. Hopefully they'd be contained, right. which we know is very hard to contain graffiti artists, mm -hmm. which means like we weren't supposed to be in the classroom, but of course we were on the roof. Uh, we were everywhere in the schoolyard, like, you know, it's just spread. Like right. we were a little bit everywhere where we're not supposed to be. And I, first I read about it in a newspaper. And I was like, ooh, I want to learn how to do that. So I just went there. They were right in the city of Stockholm, like in the city. So I know how to get there because my dad didn't live too far away from there. So I just jumped on the bus to the train because, you know, I live in the suburbs. And I just showed up. I was like, hey, I want to learn. And they were like, cool. They gave me a few cans. They're like, you can paint over there. And they had these big masonite boards that, you know, because there were so many of us there. And I started painting. There was no one would like sit down. You, this is how you're doing your block letters. This is how you do this. This is how you do the TikTok letters. This is how you do extension. This is how you do arrows. This is how you do 3D. So there was none of that. It was like, here, start painting. And you start painting. And back then, I have a thing for Panthers. So the only thing I painted was Panthers. I didn't paint anything else. It was just Panthers. And a few times when I went, go bombing, I would write Panther instead of Scratch. So Scratch was always more of a legal tag and Panther was like, when I decided to not be so legal. Yo, I, didn't do, ego. I didn't do that much damage. I would say I wasn't that into it because like I had space I can just go and paint like why bother, you know. But of course I did a little bit here and there. So yeah. Panther, that's, that's Panther. interesting. Did you ever try to do a retro Panther while you were here in the United States? Yeah, so I was traveling to Flushing one day. Queens, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you walk right by five points. And I was like, yeah. what is that? And I was like, I have to go back and check it out. So I went back like a week later, because it was like 2008. It was 2008. Yeah, before so, they tore it down. Yeah, and that's how I started painting again because like I said I was doing the I mean I was in school and then I was working uh -huh. it wasn't really you know I, I think I felt like I was missing something but I didn't really know what it was and I happened by five points and I went back and it was this artist enemy he was the only one painting because it was like Marsh mm. so it was 15 years ago 
And I started talking to him and he was like, yeah, you can paint here. Anyone can paint here. You just have to ask mirrors. I was like, oh. So I was like, yeah. And then, yeah, you can go buy paint and get your caps. I was like, well, what do you mean buy paint and buy caps? What are you talking about? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like what? There's a store you can buy paint? I'm like, okay, cool. Because in Sweden, when I started painting, the good paint was the auto paint for cars. That was the best paint. It's called Auto K. That was the best paint back then. So we didn't we didn't have like Krylon or whatever. We didn't no. have those. What? You know, yeah. So that was like the best paint. And then we had some other like Swedish brands that you never heard of. But yeah, so it was like you can buy paint. I don't know. You can buy paint. Like yeah, they make them like specific brands for graffiti. And I was like, what? <laughs> so all that was new to me. I didn't know. And then um. Mears wasn't there, I think, when I came back, but Dism used to do it with Mears back then. Dism? Dism. Dism. Yeah, Anthony or Dism. Yeah. So he was like, yeah, I can give you a spot. And, you know, so he was the first one I talked to there uh, to get a spot. And they gave me a spot. Then Mears came, was like, no, we we'll move you. The spot is better. So whatever. So that's kind of like how I met Mears, too. So and then I was. They used to have a spot on a dumpster, like a wood board on a dumpster. So I used to come there almost every day and just do something, just practice, you know, because everything was new to me. I, I, didn't, I didn't remember, like, I used like members. That's when I, I was like, I had to do the panther again. So I did the panther once there. Um, the name, you never was, had a panther like character or nothing like that? Yeah, there's, the character, the panther, like the character. That was oh, the only thing I, I, would I like painted, to see yeah. I can show you I have pictures, yeah. So it doesn't even have news clips from back then. And I'm standing next to a panther. And then it's another one where I like paint another panther next to another panther. I'm like, but that was the only, I didn't paint anything else, just the panthers. So that was it. It was the character of the panther. Yeah. Then you switch back to Scratch after a while. Yeah, and then I mean, Scratch is like my, like my tag. And then, you know, I always like drew character too. Then. Mirrors used to actually do graffiti classes right. for free, free oh, yeah. classes, yeah. right? So I used, like, I need to learn how to do my letters. I never really learned how to do them properly, you know? So I used to crash his class. So he really broke it down for me, showed me how to do this step by step. And then I just kind of went on on my own. So it was really thanks to mirrors and like everybody at Five Points, because, you know, it's just mirrors. There's so many people there just volunteering, helping out. You know, so I was there um, almost every day for a while, you know, and then that's how I got back into it. And I, you know, came up with different things to paint and you right. know, characters and you do scratch. And then for so long, I need to shorten it. So that's why I came up with the SKRT. I see it. So yeah. it's shorter. And I switched the C for the K because I was like, it's a lot more fun. You can be more fun with the K than the C. So True. it's kind of like, where you, you know, read it, it can like scratch. So, yeah. So that's how I came up to SKRT. It's like, it's too damn long to do scratch. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, were you ever into racking paint? Did you ever, ever rack any paint? Well, we remember back then you used to have these big bomber jackets and, you know, yeah, yeah. and then you <laughs> walk like that. That's like a yes. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I might have done that. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was almost a sport. Uh, yeah. Not at buying paint. Um, how about um, first of all, I would like to say right quick. When you said you were painting on a piece of wood at Five Points, yeah. that's a new medium. They haven't shows about uh, plywood and stuff. Have you seen that? They paint wood, just wood. The guy Optimo and all of those guys. I think I saw that. Yeah. That's that's coming out. Is is getting bigger? Yeah. Yeah. I mean. It's one way to do it. I mean, if you want to keep it, you know, it's peanut of wood and then yeah. you can keep it. And, but you it's, know, heavy. it's heavy. Yeah, those are heavy. Like, what we had at the graffiti school is a mass meat board. They're a lot thinner, but they're also very flimsy. So it's like, yes, yeah, not as heavy, but they're very flimsy. So you still have to put them in some kind of frame or something. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I mean, uh, I guess, yeah, I mean, if you want to keep them, because like also to do it, on canvas it's a different medium too but like to get a very big canvas you have to do the roll you still have to frame it and blah 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 yeah, yeah. And, you know it depends what you're going to do i guess to use it for you know 
Yeah, it's a process. But for me, I'm like, I'm up for it. I'm painting whatever you need, metal, wood, wall, it doesn't matter. It's, just it's paint. paint. I just want to paint. Yeah, I just want to paint. Let me ask you though, coming uh, to the U.S. and with, through the school program, did you have any problems with uh, immigration or trying to get your visas? I mean, it's a process. Yes, it is. I mean, I, I had, I don't know how many go through it. And like, people want to understand how expensive it is. Because yeah. you need to get the lawyer. And it's like, first you have this one, then you need this one, and then this one, then you need that. And it's like, and it's a lot of money. Like, I spent probably tens of thousands of dollars wow. to get my papers. It's just... I don't people understand how expensive it is and time consuming because you have to like prove that you're the best or whatever, whatever. And like, it's not easy. It's not easy. Like some people think you would come here and blah, no. And back then it was a lot easier than after 9-11 happened. Everything it's like totally different, total different game. Yeah. 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 So I guess it's rewarding when you got it. It was like a celebration. I mean, every time is nerve wracking and then you're like, I got it, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, yeah. yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you about um, the Hall of Fame, the Graph Hall of Fame, because I, I saw some of your profile. You painted there. Yes. Sometimes. Uh, yes, and yeah. uh, I think you have a, you even mentioned Top. Yes. So um, I met James first at Five Points. There's another Five Points now. Do you know that? Yeah. Well, what, you know, Bushwick Collective also used to be called Five Points. And then, oh, yeah. then, then there was like, uh-uh. So then they changed the Bushwick Collective, and now it's... Five points, they, the owner tore down, they try to call the five points. I'm like, whatever. It doesn't, for me, it's only one five points. And, and then it was they the tore that was down. There. Yeah. yeah, when I was there, like, like you still call the same name. It's kind of, to me, it's a little bit like, it's weird. Call it something different. It's not five points. Because that five points doesn't exist to mm -hmm. me anymore. So, yeah. Yeah. But go back to um, uh, Hall of Fame. So, I think I contacted James for something, and then he was like, hey, we have this meeting about the Hall of Fame, you should come, because you know, he had met me at five points. So I was like, all right. So I went to the meeting, and then I ended up getting a spot. So that was how I first ended up being at the Hall of Fame. That was 2011, I think. How did they do that? They just pick you, and you just come and paint? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't even really know what it is. I just know I showed up at the meeting, one of the meetings. I don't know. And then I think some people get invited, some people get met. I don't know. It was very confusing. I'm sure I just know I end up in the spot. So, you know, and every year it's the same thing. Always drama. Anything we do with graph, you know, it's going to be a lot of drama and a lot of whoop, whoop, whoop. And, you know, hopefully it happens. I think <laughs> they canceled a couple of five, I mean, a Hall of Fames recently. Right. So, actually, so I painted 11. I painted 2012, 13. I did something, uh, 14. And then they skipped one year, I think. And then mm -hmm. I painted 2016 again. And then last time they did it, I was just there hanging out, helping out, you know, right. Kimby and those guys right. just a little bit. Um, and then it was the pandemic. So was, I don't think, uh, you know. Anybody did anything for right. a couple of years. Exactly. Yeah. And then I don't know, you know, I think they tried, they tried last year, but then they wouldn't do something with the permits. Because, you know, it's not easy, like, you have to get the school to approve it, and then you have to get the permits. It's not that easy. And now, you know, they think about the safety with the kids, and, like, you know, graph writers, they do things, and there are cameras there, and they can see everything that goes on. And I think people forget, with, like, those cameras, the principal will literally look at them, because I know Joey told me, like, he will look and be like, what is going on here? And he's like, oh. You're talking about Joey T. Yeah, I was like, yeah. it's funny story. It's like, if we're literally looking at TV, like, what is going on? And, you know, writers are going to be writers, and, you know, it's hard to control sometimes. Okay, before I jump to, uh, back to uh, a family matter, I wanted to ask you, have you ever painted at uh, the Rooftop Legends? No. You ever heard of it? Yes, I've been there. Yeah, yes, yeah. but I've never been invited to paint there. Yeah, no. they're, they're particular. Yeah. They're, they're, I don't know what the uh, politics is behind it, but uh, like I said, it's, it's a nice event. This is funny because when I used to do stuff with Fever a few years, many years ago now, um, we used to joke about, you know, they have all these reality shows like Love and Hip Hop. We're like, scrap that. It's going to be graph and drama. And it's true. <laughs> and you know what? Any art shows, any event, there's always going to be some kind of drama with something because that's just how it goes. 
But, it, it, but a lot of times, right quick, a lot of times, uh, some of the drama are from people that don't paint and don't draw. Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't they're non-creative. They're, they're yeah. looking, they're, I call them, like you got Insta, coffee, Insta, cafe, whatever. I call them instigators. Cause that's what they do. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I wanted to ask you about, uh, what did your family feel about you leaving Sweden? Did you, did anybody come with you? Did you open the doors for anybody to come through? No, I, I'm the only one. I'm the only one. Uh, my dad did not like it. He tried to stop me. It did not work. Cause I'm more stubborn than he is. So mm. yeah. That should be interesting. Yeah, I was like, nope, I'm going. So, <laughs> did you kind of try to entice you? Hey, guys, you wouldn't believe it's just come on. What's none of that? No, it's just like I'm out. Bye. <laughs> I'm ready. Bye bye. <laughs> so everybody's still over there. Yeah, I have one sister who lives in England. So one that went to England. I right. went to New York. That's yeah. different. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what? So when you got here, where did you first land? I mean, you came to New York, you was uh, your first apartment. So when I first came here, because I was in school, we were um, in a dorm mm. in Brooklyn Heights. Mm -hmm. So, and I went to Pace University. So we Bridge. used to walk over the bridge to save uh, money. tokens. Right. We were still tokens back then. I remember then. that. <laughs> and so we used to save money by walking over the bridge. Right. And we would walk back. Yeah. So first line was in Brooklyn Heights. Right. And then from there, uh, where'd you go? Well, I was school first, and uh, I had to go back and reapply my papers so I can get it for work. Because you know, right. from school, because now I got work, right. so I had to go back get my papers. And when I came back, uh, landed in East Harlem. Oh, and where you at now? You've right, been there right for right there, yeah. You've been there same for, apartment, yeah. There for a good minute, huh? Yeah. You like the area? Twenty-five years. Yeah. Okay. Uh... All right. So what are your first impressions? What did you think about me when you got here? Did you, you landed in New York? Oh, I'm home. You you liked it? It was yeah. like okay, yeah. I'm, you know. I'm home. I never felt like I I fitted in Sweden or belonged. I always mm. felt out of place. New York was it. You, and you I, never... I literally landed. And I just like touched down. I'm home. You felt comfortable. Yeah. You felt that yeah. ease. It was enough. I I don't know what it was. It's just like I'm home. Mm. Yeah. Okay, uh, Harlem, yeah, Harlem, Harlem's had its ups and downs. I, I like Harlem. As a matter of fact, a couple of writers live right over there on 101st and 7th. I mean, 107th and 1st. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, on 2nd Avenue and 102nd. Yeah. And so, Sharman is right there. Right there. Yeah. In 1199. Yeah. So he's, yeah. Um, what's his name? And, uh, Des was from Metro North over there. Yeah, uh, and also, actually, so... On my same block, just one block over, Snake used to live when he was a kid on the same block, on 102nd and 3rd. And I'm on 2nd and 102nd. So right. he was just one block away in the projects. He, he used to live there for a few years. Yeah. The same block. Right. So I see you. Um, you you're, you're a very busy lady. You, you're, you're involved in a lot. I looked over your stuff. I was pretty uh, impressed. Oh, thank the, the you. The things thank that you're doing because, uh, you know, I guess I was trying to, you know, as you see new artists come on the scene, you want to know where they're from, you want to know, you know, yeah. the, the, what inspires them. Um, so you you uh, paint just off the top of your head. Do you have any inspirations other than your Panther? Uh, is there any other, you know, things you like to draw, scenes, just lettering? Yeah, so I, I always loved comic books and like fantasy and i also inspired by like especially way back of how creative the graffiti artists were because in sweden we don't call them graffiti writer we call them graffiti painter uh, that's like more the translation so and some of them they were so talented they had like characters they did full like production walls on the yeah. buildings like mm -hmm. back then like it was crazy so yeah. i always wanted to learn how to do like production walls like the whole thing i wanted to have to do letters the characters like everything so and i look now like this thing too like you see crews like tats crew and fx crew right. and uw like all those production walls yeah. and how creative a lot of it comes from like the comic books and from you know and i always inspired by that and that's always what i would like to do and 
I try to, you know, for me, it's like graffiti is art. Mm -hmm. So I always try to promote like the art of graffiti, kind of, in one way. And a lot of people forget of, like the art. They just think about the illegal. Like it's all about the tax, the throwaways, the illegal, illegal. Graffiti is only illegal. Like, no, 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 no. It's all the art part because like it, how created are and look how much they have created and how they take it. And, like, and also look at Europe, even from the 80s what they have done like you have like MIS crew that make their do all these stuff but like everybody like how clean like look at Mad C one of the most talented writers right yes she's a female people like oh she's just a female no she's one of the best ones she can probably paint anything Mad C yeah even though now maybe she's more of a contemporary artist I think like mm -hmm. you see some of the murals she does it's mm -hmm. more like abstract but look at the production walls she have done they are insane, like so realistic. And like, you're like, wow, you know, I really would like to be able to use, like what she can do, right? Yeah. You know? So for me, that's a very big inspiration, you know? And as an artist, you can look at stuff and kind of critique it. You you see the, the crispness, you see the lines, you see yeah. the, the, yeah. the blends, you see it all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, one thing I, I liked that, that, that amazed me was, uh, the, the, you, I'm sure you've seen Bushwick Collection. Yes. These guys yes. are doing sides of buildings, and I'm like, wow. yeah, yeah. The perfect proportion. Yeah. I'm like, wow. But um, anyway, uh, you you've been involved in a lot of things. You've been involved with a lot of crews. You paint a lot of walls. I've seen only that. one crew. What crew is that? Top. That's okay. it. Probably because yeah. James put me down with Top a long time ago because I used to help him with a, a lot of shows because uh, I used to do um, the posters for him, like the flyers and stuff i didn't know that yeah so i used to help him uh with doing that so oh i used to I help him a lot of shows like i don't even know how many shows like through the years so you know and he was nice to put me down with like the shows he put me down with the hall of fame you know and a lot of, i think people may not even know or forget about it and then i also did a lot of stuff with fever like i go back now it's lady like, lady fever lady, lady King King fever yeah, yeah, i'm yeah. like how do we do so many things and then i was like half the times we were mad at each other, so we wouldn't even speak. And yet we did so much stuff. A lot of stuff here in the Bronx. And you know, because fever is from the Bronx. Yeah, I was wondering how you stay yeah. so busy. I'm like, Yeah, and I don't even know. I'm like, I'm looking back now, I'm like, how did we do all this stuff? I don't even know, because it was, we were all over and then we did this and that, and I didn't even know. I, I know remember one good. time, uh, right quick, uh, I was with uh, messing with T James Topping him over on the 104th Street Gallery, and he asked me to do mm -hmm. something, and I don't think I did it timely yeah. enough. And he says, "Jenny, tell him <laughs> what happens." That's the first time I saw you. Oh, really? Yeah. He said, "Jenny, tell him what happens," and you said, "He'll cut you off." I'm like, James Topping. And um, people don't know that well, I can be harder than what he would be. I'd be like, "No, you're out." <laughs> Okay, all right. But um, and you, uh, tell me some more stuff that you're involved with. I'm seeing you doing the the cans over there with uh, wall works. I'm I'm seeing uh, yeah, so canvases and stuff. Yeah, I, I try to stay busy. Um, I like doing the spray cans, and actually, the way we started doing the spray cans was because uh, me and Fever we end up. She got the wall. We mm -hmm. didn't know what was going to happen. It was a West Farm Road, right off um, 173rd, which is like one block from Boone Avenue. Yeah, I know. Right? Right. Right around the corner. Mm -hmm. And there was this company, the owner, she met Fever because she was painting Boone Avenue one day. Right. And she ended up like, come and check out the space or the walls. And then Fever later, you know, checked it out. And then she reminded me. And I was all right, we're back, back for it, whatever. Then we went there to check it out, and then we end up creating. We invited artists to come. We didn't know who's going to come or not. And then it but kind of grow, to keep you and it grow, cool. and it like more and more. And then we're right. like, let's call it the Bronx Graffiti Art Gallery. Like it's just end up that way because we got Tats Crew, we had King B, we had Sass, Scheme, Trike, you know. And then it was me and Fever. We're like, well, most is from the Bronx. We are in the Bronx, so let's call it that. So. Right. We were thinking like, how can we get money? Maybe we can sell them, then we can get funding. We're like, so I was like, what if we take all these spray cans? We have all these empty spray cans. So like, let's paint them, 
and then we put bronzegraffitiartgallery.com because I had done a website for, you know, we ended up doing a website for Good everything. Idea. And, you know, for it. And so that was one way. And then they're like, no, we can't sell them here because they didn't want to sell them there because, you know, their business, their warehouse, so we couldn't sell them there. So I think we're talking to BG because, you know, he was one of the artists and he's like, check with Scrapyard, maybe we can sell them there. So I reached out to Mark because back then Mark was the owner of Scrapyard. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah, so we you did like a pop-up. Yeah, we did a pop-up mm -hmm. at Scrapyard and then we were selling them very cheap. Like they were selling cheap. Though. They were selling? They were sold out almost before we even opened. It Ooh. was like, uh, and I had to ask Bayou and Nice to do extra cans because they, they were like more people wanted. Them. So that's how it started. And then we did another one. And then I ended up doing one at Worldworks. Um, because every time we try to like, let's see if we can elevate it. Like, you know, I want to elevate, I want to make more. Like right. they can really become like collector arts. It was so like, they were so popular. Yes, like, they are. And people spend more time on them. We can make more nicer, like a little more time on them. And we can, you know, raise the price, we raise right. the price. And they're right. like, I'm surprised. Even with Walworks, we wow. sold a lot. And we only wow. opened two days and we sold a lot. Wow. And we also had even art pieces too. So it, it was, I was like, wow. But it's so much work, and it like is. you know, so I'm like, I we did three. I'm like, or I end up doing three. Three cans, three shows. Three shows. So three pop up spray can art shows. What do you call it? Right. So the last one was a World Works, and uh, which was 2016, 2015. That long ago. Uh, yeah, it would be a while, and I was like, all right, let's do something else. But I still like do them sometimes. I paint them. I do them. I you know, they're fun to do, like, you know, I don't know, and then um, I checked with Crash, and, you know, they opened this, the Wallworks 2, the store, you know, and okay. you see Wallworks 2. I see, I see right? you. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and I was like, asking, he was like, yeah, do you mind if yeah, you can put them in the store? I was like, sure, put some in the store. And right. You can put some in the store, and then also gave us a small 12 canvases, so we ended up doing, like, a little, like, online thing, you know, because mm -hmm. it was also COVID at the time, so it was like, Everything you know, you just do it online. Yeah, you do it online thing. So yeah, cool. And then you know, uh, you know, then it's good. Then because then you can, use, they're there and available. If someone wants something, they can go check it out. Yeah. Good stuff. Real good stuff. Uh, like I said, you you stay busy. That's a beautiful thing. Uh, you have a few websites. Uh, down with top. Well, I guess I'm down top. Yeah, I haven't spoke to James in a while, but I think. So. Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's the, you know, I was in a crew very briefly last year, it didn't last, so we don't need to mention that, but you know, that's how it crew. goes. Graph and drama. That was the name of it? <laughs> no, I'm not going to mention the name of it. Oh, like you said, no, like, I don't need is, to mention no, drama. No, done. So yeah. moving on. So it happens. You have to try it. And yeah. it wasn't for me. So I was like, you know what? Before it gets, you know, like with fever, because me and fever we just went like, you know, it wasn't very bad. And, you know, before it happens, bye, I'm done. So, yeah. I think I see fever in the Milan over at Tough City. You Have you ever painted over there? I painted mean, Tough City. But mm -hmm. I think the last time I actually spoke to fever, like really talked to her, was in 2016. Wow. So, yeah. I have seen her, but we haven't really talked. So, yeah. But we were double trouble. So, we were trouble. <laughs> but we were also a lot of fun trouble. I don't know. I, and like I said, we were like everywhere. That's so true. I was like, I don't even know how we did all this stuff because half the time we were not even talking to each other. So it was, you know, but we were double trouble, we were real double trouble. So yeah. But this was kind of fun, you know. And right. it happened. <laughs> yeah. It was, it... But yeah, but lately I've been working um, with another girl, Angel. So Angel? I know, yeah. We never heard of her. She, I actually met her. At Fine Points in 2008, we go back. Uh, and it was 2020, and she contacted me, like, let's do something. And I was like, all right, let's do something. So we did like an all ladies wall. Um, I reached out to me, he gave us like the whole wall at the Austin uptown. Place. Yeah, like in Wood, the in Wood spot, the gas station. Uh, and, oh, you took about 207. Yes, up there. So, mm -hmm. and we were like, oh, well, we can invite more girls, so you know we invited some ladies more girls. Day and yeah. stuff like that. I yeah, so it. we did like all ladies thing. I don't, I don't ever called ladies. Day. It was like ladies wall. We, you know, oh. we had a lot of fun. 
and we also got in trouble. Uh, I guess right. that happened. But yeah, we had so much fun. And then I think, was it later there? I ended up doing like a Halloween wall too. So got a whole bunch of ladies. And then there was one guy, a Swedish guy, that I actually met when I was there taking pictures of the first wall. So we're like, come on, let's paint. You know, he was a writer too. It was funny meeting another Swedish writer on the in, in wood up there randomly when I was taking pictures of the wall. I think I saw that. Probably. Yeah, it's just funny like how that happens. But so he was painting wall with us, and I, I have done a few things as well. The first one I did was um, me, Fever, Vic, and Shiro, also in Inwood, back in 2014, and Rocky came up. That was the first time I met Rocky, because mm -hmm. Crane and Reed brought her back out. So I think that was the first time I met Rocky, yeah. Oh yeah, so I've done a few ladies as well too, like all, it's fun, and I just did one. You the guys just up uh, Sunday. Mike's, Mike's yeah, yeah. yeah, and he, 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 yeah, they invited us, so yeah, we showed up, and yeah, it was cool. We rocked the rooftop, yeah. I, I just I've seen the piece you did, I like that. Uh, yeah. You have your own unique style and stuff. Yeah, because I think my style is kind of mixed with like, how I remember like the old Swedish, but now it's also influenced heavily, of course, of New York. I mean, it's just, and then my own weird style, you know. But I always am very, very, I think it's important is to show that I do everything. I do my own sketches. Versatile. I do my own sketches. I do everything myself. You know, as a female artist, you know, because, you know, some, they have a little help here and there. And then all the girls get put like, like, oh, you see girls, you can't paint. Like, I don't mind time being in the Hall of Fame. And... Um, Guys come like, oh, let me show you how to buff the wall. I was like, well, I think I can manage to buff the wall by myself. <laughs> and then they see me paint. They were like, oh, well, you know how to paint. I'm mm. like, yeah, I know how to paint. Like, come on, you know. Yeah, try to switch styles too. Like, do a little different each time. And sometimes, uh, you know, try a little different. Yeah. That's what it's about. Yeah. Changing up. Yeah. Okay, when we're talking about collaborations, I think uh, 2023 is a year of collabs. That's that's like the latest thing. Uh, everybody just boosting each other. Have you done any collaborations? Yeah, I, I mean, I've collaborated. I think my first collaboration I had was with Five Point, 2008, with Shiro. She was my first artist I collaborated with. I had painted something, and then she was talking. It's like, you want to do something? She had like a character on top. Yeah. yeah. So she was my first collaboration, and I mean, I always collaborate with different artists. I think different things depending on what you do. But um, I think what people may not know is like I've done a lot of stuff with King V. Like even being done with Hall of Fame. Like when they did the Wild Star Wall, they recreated him and Bass. I was there helping them out. You know, people know that because you know they were like, hey, you're not gonna put your name in the wall, blah blah blah. You're a girl. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm gonna take pictures, so everybody gonna know anyway. And then they're like, no, don't take pictures. And then of course later they asked me about the pictures. So I was like. Now you have pictures, but yeah. So sometimes I help him with projects, and sometimes he helps me with projects. Cause um, it's pretty cool. I've been asked uh, to do commission work, murals, and one of them that was really a big project for me was for waste management. It's the Holland River Yards transfer station, which is when you drive over the Willis Ab Bridge. So right the South, South Bronx you can get, they're right there. You can see like the big green buildings. So we painted two of them. Um, they call it like one they have for the employees, you know, where they, you know, have kind of hang out and change and everything. Right. And then the office building. So we, I got tasked to my company that I have, got tasked to create three murals for them. They're all like climate based. And it was funny because when I was there, their little says like, we have this pollination garden. So maybe like wildflowers and bees. So I was like, you ever heard of King Bee? <laughs> That's the first thing I popped my head. Like, yeah. I can't do anything about bees. And I was asking him if he wanted to like collaborate with me. So um, I came up with the design for that building and I told him like, send me your bees so I can add it so, to the design. So I added to the design. I sent it to him for approval. I was like, what do you think? Any suggestions, edits or anything? And I think he was like, yo, can you just add some clouds, maybe? He was like, add some clouds. Um, and then I also designed a whole, because um, it was like climate change. So I mm -hmm. created this um, design with like a 
floating, melting iceberg. And, oh. you know, but I was thinking I was to show you, like, how beautiful this is. Like, we should keep it. We need to, you know, make people aware of, like, we should not pollute, you know, the sea and take care of the environment. And also, so it was kind of like a mix. Uh, and then I also invited my friend Angel um, to do one mural. So she did a uh, tiger because, you know, some of the tigers are extinct also. So yeah. it was kind of cool. Like, we really transformed the entire space there. I might have know? seen it. I think I might yeah. have seen it. So, and we, that was actually, I don't know, we did a few different projects. So the way I got waste management actually through Angel. So she was the one, she was painting on her block in Bushwick. And one of the guys that was on the block, he was like, hey, I work for waste management. You should come and do something. So she's like, cool. So she got a bunch of artists including me, to come and paint their containers. So we paint the containers, and they put them on the train, which is pretty cool, because, you know, they have train schools all over, because, you know, they collect, you know, the trash right. and everything, so they have to transport it. Right. So that was the first project. Then she got invited back, and I helped her do a mural for them. So, and then they asked us again. We ended up painting one of their fences. Uh, we the people. I think we were like eight artists or something that did be the people in Brooklyn. And then she moved to Florida. And then she was like, hey, if you need a contact, she gave me as a contact. So that's how I got a project. And that was also like, well, I have to invite her back because I wouldn't have it if it wasn't for her. So I told her, I know she was going to come to New York for something else. So let's see if we can make it work. And we make it work. So she was up for a project. And now I may do another project for them. It's very early stages, but you never know. Hopefully, then I have a few other things in the works. Nice. So we we'll see. I mean, I always collaborate. I mean, with different and artists. Other things. Yeah, yeah, and then like I've done a lot of jobs with King B that probably no one ever knew about. And you know, so wow. I, I, last year too, I got reached out from someone. Um, I think it was Facebook, and he's like, "Hey, I have a friend that needs someone to." paint uh, like a mural, like they're all their design, like this is like a shout out from a NAS song. They want to paint it in Brooklyn at this, you know, under the Cape Bridge, they call it, it's a park, but they can't find anybody to paint it. I was like, I can go check it out. And that's what I can do with King B. And it's high up, it was high up. And first they were like talking about doing a sister lift, but then really as part of like, no, it's not gonna oh, work. We need a real boom lift, the right? Cherry, the cherry picker. Thing. Yeah, yeah. that's not gonna be enough. We need a boom lift. So they were like, all right. So we ended up getting the project. We got busy. I think we knocked out three, four days. Wow. And it was long. It was like a whole like sentence. And it's not easy to get that. And they were like, we want to stand in between these pillars under the bridge. We're like, we're gonna try our best. We got it pretty good, I think. Wow. Yeah, yeah. We were up on the lift. And we, we painted it like through the whole night, and I was like, look at the beautiful sunset. And they were like, wait, no, it's the sunrise. It's like, oh, we painted throughout the whole night. You know, it's like, that's what you do sometimes. Yeah. Like, I know, we got into the zone. We just like, we just painting orange letters. Like, you're painting, you're painting, you know. So, yeah, and I got that from Facebook. And then I got another uh, commission job. Uh, this event planner reached out on Instagram. I didn't think it was real because she's like, it's for like a fashion brand, fashion magazine. And I was like, okay, sure. Well, let's see what it got, what it's about. And then it ended up being an event for Mark Jacobs and Vogue magazine. And they used to want me to send some letters, do some icons for like a specific event. But it was like a time frame, So we knew like we have only this day and everything has to be done by this time. Wow. So that was kind of cool too. It's random, like from social media. So. I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So I'm trying more and more, but you know, you get this project, you can get a bunch of things, you're very busy, and then it can be absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I also do, um, now that I really start enjoying doing, is I do a lot of graffiti workshops and paint, like light painting at events too. So I do a lot of those, but then you work with kids and usually they don't want you to post that stuff because, you know, parents don't want the kids on social media. So. I do a lot of those through the years, so that people may not even know I do either. So. How do you plug into that? So um, it's also through my friend Angel. Like um, she used to do this for this company in Brooklyn, and then you know she moved to Florida, so she recommended me. So I end up doing it too. 
So yeah, it's kind of cool actually. Yeah. Yeah, um, she left. She probably should have left you with all of our clients here. But if she's in Florida, have you ever done Art Basel? Have you ever done? No, no. Like she's not in Miami, so she's in a different part of Florida. Okay. Yeah. No, I never been down to. Uh, no, I never made it there. Okay. So what's what's some of your most proud work that you've done? What what have you done that impresses you? Is Wait, one of my favorite wall I've done is. Uh, I did a Nina Turner wall at the Hall of Fame in 2014. Oh. Because, you know, usually you know you get a spot and that's it. And I know for some reason this year, I had this idea and I showed it to James and he gave me like a little spot. And then he was like, no, I just can have a little more, and then a little more. And then somebody gives a little more. And then now you're like, I'm like, all right. And then I just went in and I did like a full production wow. all by myself. Wow. So that was kind of cool because like the character, the background, the, I had like a piece. That's kind of uh, one of my favorite. Like, I really like that. And you one. got like four ninjas that you got to do, right? No, I only did one. Okay. Did one ninja. The pizza one, huh? <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. I remember I did, did some pizza. I did like, um, cause you know they're underground, so all the background is like ray scale, and then that made the piece pop more also. So it's right. like I try to play sometimes with, you know, different things. I mean. I did one last year that I really, really liked too. It was for a restaurant up in the Bronx. So also a bunch of girls. I didn't organize it. I was invited. And I ended up like at the end, I was like, well, it's almost like I have my own walls. I was like, I'm going to go all out. You know, I don't care. I'm going all out. So right. I did my piece and, you know, it was for a Columbia restaurant. So I like to do something, you know, Columbia, Columbia. but not like mm -hmm. obvious, like everybody else. They were like the Columbia colors, the Columbia flag. I was like, no. I did reaches. I like I put in like the Andes, the mountains in the background. I was like they have the stone figures that's in the jungle, you know. So I tried to add some elements like waterfall, you know. Make so a I scene. did like a whole background like jungle right. thing, yeah. How do you guys get paint? Y'all do you buy and paint these days? Or sponsors well, sometimes I buy paint sometimes you have leftover from a job True. so it really depends like so I mean if you really want something specific you probably go buy paint like yeah. like you need certain yeah like, and stuff like that yeah but sometimes just like what do I have at home it's like I make it work that's what I did Sunday we're painting okay I got painting I'm like what do I have so like I have all these colors well let's use them you know so that's how you know Depends. So, so it really you got, depends. You got yeah. like a studio at home, huh? Paint, but spray paint. No, it's like a, you know, apartment, office, studio. Everything. You know, everything. Yeah. A little bit of everything. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. That's good. Yeah. That's very good. Okay. Um, I got a question for you. Could you tell me about that creative firecracker? Because I, I saw that. Yeah. And so creative firecracker is my company uh, that I started in two thousand five to do freelance work and contract work, art direction and graphic design. But then lately I've been started getting more art projects and you know, do murals and so I just kind of expanded on that. So, wow. you know, and I think well, like my experience to work as an art director, graphic designer in advertising really helps when you do murals because usually you get commissioned to do it and then they want you to commute a specific message and how to put that together, come up with a message or tell it through just through art, an image. It helps you to have a background because like you do the research and you come up with an idea and then, you know, you have to show them the design, the, you know, what you think you're doing, you know, the layout, like, you know. You do that first and then you get their approval. Yeah. Then you go to work. And then it's like, I need a 50% percent. I need a deposit. I'm not doing it until I get a deposit. Right. <laughs> I right, done everything now and I need a deposit. Then we can start. Yeah. And you probably have a staff. You have your little go-to girls and guys that you need. Yeah, usually King B, but sometimes you get mad at him, so you get fired. But then I kind of stuck with him, so you know it happens. Or like if I can, I get Angel or or um, also work with some great artists when I do the workshops. So sometimes I ask them to help out. So it really depends on the project and yeah. who's available, you know. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have well, to Well, name some of those artists. Are they spray paint people? Or are they just regular artists? Or? Yeah, they're your feet artists or oh, yeah. street artists. Okay. So, uh, you know, one guy I did, the, he helped me with the Mark Jacobs uh, Vogue job. And he writes Swink or Ayado. So we do a lot of workshops together too. So 
um, I asked him to help out. He was available. So I was like, oh, let's do it. Because I know he can do it. Because sometimes when you do workshops, it's only one hour. So you have to show someone that never used spray paint. And, you know, show them basic spray paint technique, how to do it. And then we, they would pick a word or name, hopefully short. We try to keep it short as possible. Because, right. you know, we have very limited time. We will sketch it up. And then they can try to do design as well as they can. We will clean it up and you know use some canvas so they get to keep it. They can keep it. So right. yeah. That sounds like those new uh, things they have with the, the paint and sip or, or paint and. Yeah, but this is a different because like we they have a spot in Bushwick, um, Bushwick Market where you can go go and do it, or we can come to you. So we go all over the, the Tristan area. We even done like camps wow. in Pennsylvania, wow. like uh, kid camps in Pennsylvania. So we go there, be there almost all day, and it can be like two, three hundred, uh, you know, kids. Wow. And it would be like rotating, like boom, 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 Whoa. and then finish, next group, boom, boom, boom finish. Yeah. It, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Lot Sounds of like, like fun. Yeah, so yeah. You got it down packed and, and, it's, <laughs> and, it's, and it's working for you. That's, that's yeah. a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, let me see what we have else for you. Uh, Mm, okay, let me ask you one more question. This is my last question to you. What does the Bronx mean to you? Bronx, New York. Bronx is the birth of uh, graffiti and hip hop. Yes, I mean, yes. come on, that's where it started. Like, you know, for me, it's actually one of my favorite places to paint. I know it's just a different feel when you paint in the Bronx than when you paint anywhere else. You know, and I've been fortunate to paint, um, you know, Few different spots in the Bronx, um, and you know it's always a different feel. Like the people, like how they respond to you when you paint on the, because you know if you paint well on the street, they will walk by and start talk to you. And they do. Yeah, you do. Always get the crazy people. Yeah. You know, as part put of my it. Name up there. <laughs> they, yeah, and you have a name or like you know, it, but I don't know. It's a different feel to paint in the Bronx. I don't know. It's, it's yeah. It's one of my favorite places to paint. Yeah. They also say that. Uh, they also say that um, graffiti is the first element of hip hop. And I think it is, uh, the graffiti is the first element. And I um, just wanted to throw that out there. That's the Bronx. Bronx is hip hop. Bronx, Bronx is hip hop. That's where it came from, all right. yeah. Uh, uh, all right. Um, one more thing. Can I get you to put your tag while you're on camera? Sure. All right, well, let's get you, because all of that is going into the archives. Um, Get you something, we'll get a Jenny scratch for our archives. You see, they're keeping a file for everybody who's been interviewed. Bring this around. Play it there. And give us some original Jenny scratch tag. Uh, Panther. You know what I'm going to add. What? <laughs> <laughs> In color. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, that looks like it says um, Panther. I saw that before. And it was a, I think I saw that. That was on the We didn't talk about this. We talked about this. You, okay, so now we got to extend this interview. You got to explain this. Uh, so wait, how did you? I thought that I thought you were a panther. Now we have the bastard. Yeah, so, well, I started with the panther, and somewhere along the lines, bastards stuck in my head, and it's just for fun. And, uh, yeah, and, and it's, it's, I, I like, like the word. I know what it is, and I think maybe I identify it because I was like I said when I grew up, I never felt like I fit in. I was a little bit, you know, outcast. Yeah, yeah, and I was a little bit mischievous. I mean, come on, I'm a girl, I'm a graffiti artist, you know. It was different from everybody else. I loved hip hop. I grew up, you know, in Sweden. It's like white, white, white. You know, everybody was listening to heavy metal. You know, I was like, I love hip hop. And you know, That's where I grew up, it wasn't that many people that was like hip hop like I was. And you know, that thing also why when I saw, you know, the ad about the graffiti school, I was like, I don't know, it was just fit in. I was like, I love hip hop, and yeah, I want to learn how to do that, and. That's how that ended up. And then somewhere along the line, 
you know, I was misused and I was like, bastard. So I don't know where it came from. <laughs> it just popped out of my head. And then I just started doing it for fun. And I think when I'm doing stuff with fever, I was like, I'm not a queen. Fuck it. I'm a bastard. I'm like, I'm going to be the best of empress. And screw y'all. I'm not a queen. Right. I'm going to be right. above y'all. I'm going right. to be the empress. I'm going to be the best of empress. So I used to put that down for fun. And then I also started like an order of the bastard, bastards, which I don't even know. I used added it. So all of the bastards. Then I was like, yeah, bastard was here. It's fun. And then, you know, it's just, I used to do it sometimes now. I used to add it. It's for fun. Yeah. Uh, right, right quick, oh, which was something I had missed was the, the, the music sex segment. What, when did you, because to me, uh, graffiti and hip hop, all that goes together, the music, your, even if it was just run DMC, you know, as opposed to heavy metal. Wait, you, you just told us you found your place in hip hop. You like hip hop. Yeah, I mean, I think I heard it, you know, on the radio, uh, early 80s, probably. I mean, I was very young, early 80s. So, and I just, I know, I just felt it. You know, it's one of those things you just feel it, right? And I so listen to my favorite back then was L. Cool J, Cool Mo D. Oh, yeah. Beastie Boys. Right. You know, all those, like, that was my favorite. Yeah. It's still my, El Coley is still one of my favorite yeah. artists. You know, it's like, especially like, so for me, like the old school hip hop, what I call old school, it's like 80s, 90s, maybe early 2000s. That's what I like. Like, some of the new stuff, I'm like, I don't even know what that is. I didn't call it hip hop. Yeah, it's but, a you know, me, old, like, I'm uh, like, that's totally different. Me yeah, is like that, yeah. you know, that area, you know, right. run back then, like I said, like Run DMC, all those, like, you know. The original stuff. Really, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Um, just to mention, LL was just in New York recently at the at K Slade Memorial. I don't know if you knew about that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And um, Bio yeah. and them did some work for them and yeah. all that. Too. Yeah, but um, yeah, that's good stuff. Um, hip hop forever, and um, we want to thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you for coming. Me. Thank you for letting us into your private world, and um, hope to see you again soon. Yeah, we'll see. Right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.